the Book of Life, a show about Jewish books, music, film, and web. I'm Heidi Estrin. The Book of Life is a podcast service of the Feldman Library at Congregation B'nai Israel in Boca Raton, Florida. Additional support comes from the Association of Jewish Libraries. At Book Expo 2014, at the booth of Wisdom Tales, I caught up with author Jacqueline Jules and illustrator Durga Yael Bernhard, creators of the picture book Never Say a Mean Word Again, just before their autographing session. I scored an autograph copy for myself, too. So I'm here at Book Expo with Jacqueline Jules and Jurga Yael Bernhard, the author and illustrator of Never Say a Mean Word Again. So please tell us about the book. Well, I first saw this story in the Hertz Humash and this legend of Samuel Hanagid, and I looked at it and I said, this is just such an amazing story. I have to find a way to tell it for children. And it's it's a story of two adults. And I had to translate it into a story between two children and also take out some of the scarier parts. And I worked on it for over a dozen years before I got it right. It was a manuscript that I had in my drawer, and I would take it out and show it to my writing group, and it wasn't quite right, and then I would put it back, and I would take it back out. And when it's finally in this form, I said uh, to my writing group, I said, you've seen this so many times. I said, but this is the best version. <laughs> and then I, I sold it to Wisdom Tales, and this amazing artist did this incredible design and for this book, and maybe you can give us some more background on how you did that. Yeah, well, I want to start by saying I was so thrilled to work with Jacqueline because one of her books, Sarah Laughs, is one of my daughter's favorite books, and I've used it in my Judaics class because I also teach Judaics and Hebrew. So I was just so thrilled to have this opportunity. And I've long wanted to do a book about the Jewish population in medieval Spain. It seems that it's a big hole in the educational curriculum, especially in the secular school system. Many people don't even know that there was ever such a thing as a Spanish Jew and don't know what the word Sephardic really means. I've done a lot of multicultural books, so this was a great opportunity to do a different culture, and that's kind of developed into my specialty over the years. I've done a number of books that go around the world. This is one that's settled in one place, but the medieval iconography and art and history is just an illustrator's garden of delight. There's no end to it. I had enough material to illustrate a book ten times as long, and it was a matter of process of elimination to uh, decide on which designs to use and really let the story dictate. But there was a lot of weeding to be done in order to make the book clean, and I was happy that I had enough time to do it. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And I can add to that in terms of the richness of the medieval time. I read the tales of Alhambra. I did just a lot of research into that time period and the the feel of it. It's just amazing. And the stories are so rich. And you just captured all of it. I was just very excited. Shmuel Hanagid actually was responsible for a lot of that richness. He did a great deal to support the Jewish tradition in Spain. He did a great deal to support scholars and poets and artists. And he founded a yeshiva. And he, he was a phenomenal person. When he died, everything went downhill from there. Wow. Yeah. So summarize the book for those who haven't read it. All right. It's a story of two boys, Hamza and Samuel. And Samuel is the son of a vizier. But he's finding that being the son of an important man is not helping him make friends. And he's... A rather socially inept little clumsy guy and he makes some some very big mistakes and he provokes Hamza to have a uh, maybe a legitimate response angry response and so there's an incident between the two boys and that can translate very much contemporary life. I mean, sometimes we have incidences between children, between adults. I mean, it was it's bigger than a misunderstanding. And since Samuel is the son of a vizier, the vizier says to him, make sure that Hamza never says a mean word to you again. So you have a young boy who's given the responsibility to punish another. And he's not really sure. I mean, I, I, that idea, what would I do if I could punish somebody who hurt my feelings? That question really fascinated me as I was reading that. I'm, I'm a teacher too, uh, you know, and also as a person. When somebody hurts your feelings, you have, you know, you have carte blanche to, to make them get restitution. And he he comes up with some 
rather illogical things, very childish things. And then he starts getting a little more serious. At one point he goes with a paper and pencil and he says, I'm going to make Hamza write out a promise. And Hamza sees the, the paper and says, I love to draw. So suddenly the boys are drawing. And he goes with a lemon. He's going to make Hamza eat the lemon. And Hamza says, ah, that would make a great ball. Let's play. And so slowly but surely, he goes every day to make Hamza pay for his insult. Modern vernacular, we would call it a diss, maybe. It's <laughs> a medieval, medieval story of a uh, dissing situation. The donkey brain. My Judaic students started to pick that up. Donkey brain, it's not something that you particularly hear today, but they got a big kick out but, of that. But <laughs> sadly, there have been contemporary situations where one person has insulted another that has ended so tragically. But anyway, as Samuel tries to get restitution for his insulted feelings, and he sees Hamza every day, and Hamza, he extends friendship first, actually. They slowly become friends, and at the end, the vizier says to Samuel, uh, did you do what I said? Did you make sure that Hamza never said a mean word to you again? And he realizes that he's friends, and he says, yes, father, I did. So it's a story of conflict resolution, and when I first saw this story, the adult version in the Hertz Humash, I was just so taken with it. it. It's very hard to translate an adult story into children's. That's why it took 14 years. And I can remember bringing it back to my writing group and them saying, I, I know you're tired of hearing this, <laughs> but, you know, just give it one more try. Give me, you know, help me again. Sometimes you just have to let a story sit with you. And if you really are passionate about it and you really feel that it has a message and a, a, something that can touch other people's hearts, that sometimes you just have to stay with it. And, and so I did. <laughs> it's such a good message, and as you say, it's timeless. The conflict resolution, peacemaking, it's very important right now, but it really is important in every era. And the richness of the illustrations. I think having a story set in another time, it can take some of the, the personal nature out of it. I, I'm, it's I more panic. safe. It's safe. There's a safeness to it. We don't panic. Then we relate it to ourselves as opposed to saying, oh my, this is too close to home, I can't go near it. All kids have dealt with being called names. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. There are so many ways to connect with the Book of Life. Fan us at facebook.com slash Podcast. Follow us at twitter.com slash Pod. Email us at bookoflifepodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 561-206-2473. You can also listen to the latest episode by phone at 916-313-3820. And, of course, find links to everything at bookoflifepodcast.com. The Book of Life is a podcast service of the Feldman Library at Congregation B'nai Israel in Boca Raton, Florida at cbiboca.org and is supported in part by the Association of Jewish Libraries at jewishlibraries.org. Our background music is provided by the Freilach Makers Klezmer String Band at freilachmakers.com. Thanks for listening and happy reading. Thank you.